Over four decades before Thomas Edison first patented an incandescent light bulb, British inventors were demonstrating electric light using the arc lamp. But it was Edison's incandescent bulb that was really the first major revolution in electric lighting. In 1994, Dr. Shuji Nakamura invented the blue LED, which started another lighting revolution. For his groundbreaking work on LEDs, Dr. Nakamura won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2014. But since then, Dr. Nakamura, in collaboration with others, has been working to use lasers instead of LEDs to create safe, bright, efficient lighting, a technology that we will learn more about in today's conversation. Welcome to Tech Chat, sponsored by Mouster Electronics, where we chat with engineering experts about the latest technical innovations that are shaping and reshaping our world. Today on Tech Chat, we welcome Julian Carey from Kyocera SLD Laser. Julian is the Director of Product Marketing. Welcome to Tech Chat, Julian. Thank you very much for having us. We really appreciate Mauser Electronics for hosting this event and really excited to uh, introduce this technology, putting the spotlight on laser light SMD. In today's chat, we describe the features, benefits, and value of laser light. After an overview of the operating mechanism of laser light SMD, the product selection uh, is listed. Then we offer a showcase of applications and where laser light SMD offers unique value and performance. Finally, an overview of support resources for customer design in is shown, followed by conclusions to the tech chat. Julian, so I know we're going to dig into the details of the laser light technology a little later. Can you start us out with some context by introducing us to some of the products that used your laser light? Laser light SMD is implemented in a selection of integrated modules and systems. By attaching an optic and heat sink, the two degree beam angle microspot module offers an easy to implement spotlight solution. The laser light flashlight offers a white label solution to makers of sporting goods and fire and law enforcement equipment with a one kilometer range lighting solution. Coupled to an emissive or transport fiber optic, the fiber coupled SMD module offers very thin and flexible remote lighting solutions for automotive, underwater, and hazardous location lighting. Dual channel white infrared SMD is implemented in a one to two gigabit per second Li-Fi telecommunication module for high security applications. So Julian, just to confirm, all these products are using the same laser light SMD as the internal light source? That's absolutely correct. Yeah, the same 7x7 seven seven millimeter SMD component is used in all of these products. Wow, it's very versatile. Definitely, definitely. So laser light lighting applications include some things that are only 400 lumens in output. For example, like modules and flashlights. But when they're put together into arrays, you can achieve very long range, very narrow angle, powerful lighting applications. For example, like automotive aftermarket lighting for trucks and, and vehicles. Marine lighting uses arrays with, with very long range. The sky beam application is a, uh, a reference design that KSLD put together itself um, that gives you about 7.5 billion candela of, of energy. And that is an actual application in a lighthouse on the uh, west coast of the U.S., and then finally, the most powerful application we've seen yet is this 100 unit array, um, which basically replaces a very powerful xenon source for searchlights, um, giving you 40,000 lumens and about 10 kilometers of range. That's pretty impressive. That is a, a long way to be shining a light beam. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There have been applications, especially at trade shows, where we've definitely startled uh, buildings and, and things like that. People, their, their offices way, way far away. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that, that would shock some people. Since our audience is primarily engineers, can you give us some details behind the scenes kind of of the laser light technology? Sure. So, um, you know, basically the, the, the way the technology works, we can we could take a look at here. You know, really what we have are, uh, you know, kind of different types of solid state light sources. Um, and really what we do with the uh, laser light is we combine the best of both worlds regarding LED 
output and laser capability. So, you know, here in the in the center portion of the of the graphic, you can see how LED basically has very nice output, but it is quite a large source. So basically has very low luminance. Um, whereas direct laser um, can provide very high brightness, but their applications are not intrinsically safe due to the risk of emitting high levels of radiation, uh, particularly for the human eye. So laser light is unique uh, among laser-based light sources and that it is certified according to the UL uh, 8750 safety standard adopted by LEDs. Uh, laser light is also certified as safe class two for general use under the IEC 60825 laser standards. That's why we have those two sort of logos there um, underneath the, uh, the, the graphic. Uh, for Li-Fi uh, telecommunication applications, laser light can offer one or two orders of magnitude higher modulation and data transfer rate. Uh, so laser light's SMD component design enables two channel emission from the same spot location for smaller optics. Thus, uh, white and infrared light can be switched or simultaneous. Uh, in summary, laser light offers all the important attributes and safety in a single package. Now, it's interesting. I've never thought about putting visible and IR on the same source. What is the advantage of having them together? And what are maybe some applications that would use both parts of the spectrum? Well, the two-channel SMD um, uh, was really targeted first at vehicles, so automotive and, uh, and the sensing that's increasing for safety and automotive driving. Um, actually, um, that product won uh, the Prism Award from the um, the SPIE um, for as a you know a very new novel product for automotive because you know whether you're using daytime or nighttime application uh, whether you need to do short range or long range uh, range finding um, you can basically switch between your headlight effectively and uh, a sensing application where you can have, for example, high power pulse infrared, and then a receiver that's gonna give you a time of flight uh, measurement. You can actually then have a, a 3D camera in every vehicle um, just on the front of the car. Um, so that was kind of the initial application. Now for some of these communication applications, now you have two channels, of course, then you can communicate when the product is off, um, you know, all kinds of benefits like that. With the smaller spot size and higher luminance, uh, optical systems scale favorably for laser light. Uh, laser light with a secondary optic to collimate the light provides narrower beam angle, higher center beam candle power, and longer beam range. By better optical coupling into the beam angle, uh, laser light enables up to 10,000 times the lumen delivery at range. Is the power required for these two sources similar? I mean, you mentioned three watts for the laser light. Is that similar to what the LED is consuming in this comparison? Yeah, the power consumption is similar. Um, you know, from from a from a bulk lumen per watt standpoint, it's still earlier days for for GAN lasers. So you know, we're seeing you know six fifty to sixty lumens per watt, whereas LEDs, of course, have much higher lumen per watt. But the fact that the source is ten times smaller you have a higher lumen per watt delivered at the application at distance. Oh, okay. And your title here mentioned styling. What do you mean by styling? Well, when you have um, an, a smaller source, um, it, you, you not only are able to have a narrower beam, um, but what you can do is you can trade some of that optical efficiency for size. So you can, you know, for example, if you just wanted to keep the 10 degree angle that's shown in the graphic for the LED, you could make the source 10 times smaller. So you could make this like incredibly tiny, uh, you know, five, six, seven millimeter optic, basically, and it would give you 10 degrees um, if that's a value. So that's really what the styling means. You just have flexibility to really have form factor control. Basically, when you have a point source like this, you have total control over where you want the light to go, but also how small the application is. Ah, okay. So 5x smaller diameter, same beam candela. For beam patterns that are equal, uh, laser light offers the opportunity to make the application and optic form factor smaller. In this example, a module offering a 10 to graph degree beam angle may be made smaller from 50 millimeter diameter to 10 millimeter. Much sleeker, narrow beam fixtures are possible with laser light. 
Yeah, and, you're, and in some ways you're underselling it because yes, it's one fifth the diameter, but it's one twenty fifth the area. So that's a pretty significant uh, savings, and that goes back to your comment about styling from the last slide. Right, exactly. You can have a sleeker application, or you can just put more other things uh, in the application, be they sensors or others. All right, can you give us a peek inside that SMD module? Sure. Yeah. I mean, many people are very curious how this works, and I'll go into a little bit of a description about how SMD operates in terms of mechanism. The SMD component design features space for two blue or other laser diodes to emit onto a phosphor. When the blue laser light is converted to white light by the phosphor, it forms a spot of light with very high brightness and luminance. Since this light is diffuse and scattered, it is also incoherent and safe. The package has two switchable channels, so one angled platform may support an infrared laser diode that scatters at the phosphor, forming an equivalent spot of radiation. Since the phosphor operates in a reflective way, there are absorbing features in the package. The component is safe for, by design for all possible faults, failures, or defects. Uh, the top glass window seals the package for reliability and conditions the exiting light uh, for better uniformity. So the blue LED shines on that phosphor and you get white out, so you get a whole spectrum of light. What happens when the IR shines on that? Do you get a spectrum in the IR range or does it just happen to reflect and make it incoherent differently? Yeah, great question. So um, the phosphor is designed actually and, and uh, formulated to convert. It has a, an excitation wavelength band, and that's only in the blue. So um, on the infrared wavelengths, the phosphor and, and, the, and the material that's binding it all together on that plate just solely scatters and reflects. Now, the important thing is that whether you're doing the blue and then the converted white, or the infrared reflected scattered, they're at the same exact spot location, which means you can use one optic for both. Uh, it's actually a miracle of uh, material science to do that. Yeah, this product really does um, something that nothing else can even come close to. So we kind of mentioned the spectrum here. What does it look like from the blue and the IR sources? The blue into the converted white um, is really a, uh, a, a white light spectrum um, that basically has a narrow blue peak, but then also a broadband, um, you know, basically green through yellow through some red um, radiation, and there all that mixes together um, to form white light. Um, the infrared, uh, you know, maybe uh, also coming from the same spot, but that's very narrow band. Um, that's, um, you know, really kind of, uh, you know, two or three nanometers at most. And, um, and so then you have, you know, these two beams, um, uh, the nominal IR emission is, is at 250 milliwatts of, of output power. And, um, it's, it has a selection of wavelengths shown. Um, you can overdrive power is possible. Um, but then you also then have a, a resulting increase in IEC safety class. Um, so we've designed everything at nominal power to be also consistent with class two safety class. So is the, the different uh, infrared wavelengths that you list here, is that just a different product where you're using a different IR source? Yeah, there's a different IR laser in each of those uh, products. Um, so yeah, you know, 850 is kind of like a typical um, night vision, like camera type of wavelength. Yeah. Um, and so we see a lot of that um, with like portable um, products and things like that. Whereas with like some of those automotive applications I mentioned, 905 is a typical sensing wavelength. You've got a lot of sensors that are optimized for that wavelength. Okay. So here we have um, some basic data sheet highlights from the SMD data sheet. This really kind of shows really kind of how much more luminous you get out of the products you know, several times at lower left graphic. But um, you know, while it's commonly you know, asked whether this product has a collimated beam or something like that, because you, know, you, you hear laser, you think collimated beam, it's not actually. The beam is collimated out of the laser diode, but once it's scattered and, uh, and converted, it's a typical Lambertian radiation pattern, just with very high density. And um, uh, really, you know, the options available are bare component, you know, kind of a tape and reel product, or um, you know, on starboard, you know, kind of mounted on a PCB for, for basically screwed onto a heatsink uh, application. Um, you know, right now we only have 6,000 Kelvin, so it's really an outdoor 
product right now, vehicle type of products. Um, but we do have warmer CCTs um, currently under development for next year. So, Julian, you provided a quick overview earlier of some application examples, but can you provide us some more detailed uh, dive into those? Sure thing. Yeah, I know each of these following slides really goes very specifically into some applications. So here, uh, you know, we, we see with one kilometer range, um, the, the laser light flashlight has been uh, adopted with some, some customization options uh, by makers of lighting for security, uh, law enforcement, uh, other heavy duty applications. And just, you know, I mean, there are a lot of plain recreational applications um, that really like this kind of range and capability. So I think you mentioned before that these are white labels, so I can't go to the Kyocera SLD laser website and order one of these to, uh, for my birthday, can I? <laughs> no, you can't. A lot of people want to do that. But um, <laughs> but there are makers out there of flashlights um, that have taken this and, 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 you know, they basically put their own brand on it. And for example, like the buttons are a different color. The, um, the, the, the sort of uh, uh, finish is different. Um, and of course, you know, the logos and so forth. Well, that makes perfect sense. So in vehicle lighting, uh, vehicles, uh, whether they are OEM uh, or aftermarket, uh, laser light SMD increases safety and performance with long range lighting capability from a small, safe form factor. What in this context is modulation? I, I mean, I can understand modulating the signal when you talk about communication, but uh, why would you modulate your uh, vehicle headlamps? Good question. Yeah, for it's more kind of next generation application. Um, you know, really kind of thinking about communicating basically between vehicles, or uh, with the, the the smart city vision. Um, you know, there's a capability here. Um, it's not really implemented very heavily yet. It's kind of a future vision. Um, but yeah, you can basically have data uh, communication. Um, at very high data rates, at you know one to two gigabits per second from the vehicle to somewhere else, uh, you know what that might be is still kind of uh, in development. No, oh, that's a, a fascinating use of of your headlamp that I would have never thought of. But so we'll kind of have to keep an eye on that and see if that comes to fruition in the coming years. Yeah, definitely. And those images in the lower right corner there show what you're talking about, how the IR is allowing you to, to see things and sense things that the visible light is not going to allow you to do. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you know, we kind of go into the future vehicle development for sensing and, and, uh, and driving assist and then ultimately autonomous driving, different wavelengths, particularly in the IR, can, can penetrate and have more clear visibility in, in bad conditions than even the visible can. Okay, well, let's hear about one of the other applications that you guys have developed this for. Yeah, so uh, marine lighting is a really exciting application because you need so much range. Uh, laser light SMD enables safe long distance lighting. Um, and also the fiber coupled SMD, you can have remote lighting, um, which may be used flexibly with very high output underwater as well. So laser light beam shaping is possible with microstructure diffusing optics Beams may be very precisely shaped by the well-controlled beam uh, enabled by laser light. These can be used to mark areas like lanes uh, with light. Oh, so this is similar to the, the little red laser I get from my home uh, ruler kind of thing, but at a much longer distance and white light. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, you know, laser marking is something that's quite widespread. But if you want to go, you know, long distance, or and then you got to step up the power, which then if you do with pure laser, you're going to go into a different safety situation. Whereas this is just diffuse white light. Uh, to me, one of the more unique uses you mentioned very early in the presentation was for fibers. I've not used fiber lighting, so can you tell me more about it? What is it? How can it be used? Sure. Yeah. I mean, applications for fiber coupled SMD are, are coming along. Uh, with emissive and transport fiber of thin diameter, low bend radius, and high brightness, uh, the FC SMD, the fiber coupled SMD, enables high reliability applications in, in hard to reach areas like underwater, uh, medical, and appliances. Uh, really, what you're you're talking about here is an, is a very uniquely high output, but in a tiny fiber, so that um, you can have high brightness, a lot of transfer um, into applications that might be difficult to get to. Now, and earlier, the slide mentioned side emitting fiber. Is that uh, image on the dock right there, that long strip where you can actually see the light the whole way, is that a side emitting fiber? 
Exactly. Yeah, that's an emissive fiber where the light is scattered along its length sideways. Um, of course, you can just transport the, you know, you can have a jacket around a completely clear non-scattering fiber and then just, just taking the light from one place to another. So laser light and illumination and sensing with, with white light and infrared capability, laser light SMD for the first time combines lighting with sensing and range finding. With cameras, the system can offer LIDAR imaging capability in the infrared. These applications increase safety in automotive and aviation. So whether you just want to, you know, find, you know, for example, how far you are for something or just sense an object, um, that's, you know, one, one application. But uh, there's really no limit to, you know, what you can do when you basically have infrared as well as visible. You have a full spectrum of uh, illumination capabilities. And depending on how good your sensor is and your system is, you can basically see in 3D in all conditions. Yeah, that uh, is a really unique application for it, particularly when you can uh, collimate the same beam so that you know the arrange finding is pointing along the same direction as your visible light the, the entire way. You're not having two side by side and then having to tr keep the optics aligned. That's right. Yeah, one optical train for both. So this is more about uh, laser light illumination and sensing. With white light infrared capability, laser light SMD for the first time combines lighting with sensing and range finding with cameras. Then you can get these LIDAR here. Um, and, uh, you know, basically this is a full scale image. Um, we've demonstrated this, um, for example, at the CES show and, uh, and various automotive events. And, you know, it's quite clearly offers, you know, um, uh, an option, you know, for basically 3D, um, you know, capability. And this is with partners. Um, so just, you know, KSLD does not um, uh, plan to manufacture or commercialize LIDAR systems. But this is a demonstration of how an image um, can be formed and the color coding uh, in these images show distance. So there's depth data as well as uh, shape and size. So on that little board there, kind of next to the hand in the left image, is that four of the SMD modules mounted on the PCB? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so those are star um, PCB mounted four SMD modules. Julian, for someone interested in learning more or maybe getting started on a design using your laser light technology, what resources do you have for them? These sources offer you know, very powerful capabilities, but really the application, you, know, you need the full system. So KSLD offers application guide documentation um, and customer support for design integration. Um, and also staff in the field um, are on call to support customers, ray files, optical simulation, as well as some discussion of thermal management and, and other electrical considerations that may be relevant. So as we approach the end of our discussion today, is there anything else you'd like to communicate to our audience? Well, yeah, I think uh, we've really covered everything. What I'd like to do is conclude um, and just review the key messages. Laser light SMD brings value to lighting applications by increasing range and reducing size safely. With a range of products and solutions, uh, next generation applications are possible with Li-Fi and sensing in the future for exciting potential ahead. Well, thank you, Julian, for that enlightening discussion of your laser light technology. Really appreciate it very much. And uh, yeah, I really wanna thank uh, Mauser Electronics for highlighting our technology in this uh, tech chat. And for the audience, if you're interested in the Kyocera SLD laser products we've discussed today, I would encourage you to head over to Mauser Electronics, our sponsor for today's Tech Chat. And please join us again next time on Tech Chat, where we chat with the leading technical experts like Julian Carey from industry-leading companies like Kyocera SLD Laser, who are changing our world every day.